What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the Bituation Room Podcast live stream special Patreon edition that I hope people can access. But I'm seeing here in some of the comments that maybe it's hard to access them, and that's bad. I am doing this all by myself on inauguration day. God damn it, Biden has already disappointed me. Where's my help? Where is my help? Um, don't worry. I will remedy this. I'm going to remedy this right now. Uh, you never fear. We're going to go over. <laughs> um, okay, good. Todd Roy's telling me it's working out. Thank you for being here, Greg. Ta uh, Todd, um, Tanish23, Joshua Reyes, and other people. Um, this is just for patrons. So we've got 87 patrons already. And, and if you can't watch this live, um, watch it back. I'm so thankful to have uh, your support every month. Once again, trying to get some support uh, from outside of, you know, crowdsourcing because like y'all don't have money either. And like nobody's got money. Um, but I'm happy. I just I just wanted to take this day out um, from work because I'm working on uh, more Newsbroke episodes. I'm hopeful that you all caught the last episode. Let's cancel the Republican Party uh, going into the entire um, background of who was involved in the Capitol riots and who helped and how Paul Gosart and, and Mo, Brick, Mo Brooks and Andy Biggs, uh, all congressmen from the Freedom Caucus, basically helped and essentially helped coordinate and knew that there would be violence. So that episode is up right now on AJ Plus's YouTube. Uh, once again, let's cancel the Republican Party or why Biden shouldn't negotiate with insurrectionists. Y'all, I'm sure watched Biden be inaugurated. I woke up and was like, oh yeah, oh cool. Oh, Bernie, Bernie's in his coat again. Oh. <laughs> I was still in bed. I had forgotten that it was so early. I'm so excited that it happened. Um, but like, what a wake up call, man. We've got to get to work. What a moment. And, you know, Biden's talking about unity. Like, I get it. I get why he has to say things like unity. But I'm also like, do we really want unity with white supremacists? No. Uh, in fact, your ideology's done. You know, and you tried to secede once and you didn't, you weren't successful. So enough. Um, but yes, thank you, Tanish. Um, and we look, if they're afraid of liberals in our cancel culture, let's just, let's just, um, you know, let's freak them out a little bit. But Make sure to watch that. Working on a couple more episodes this January, so uh, stay tuned to AJ Plus on that. But this is the Bituation Room, and I just want to say hi, welcome. And let's, I, I, I woke up and I found this thread, and this thread was put out by a producer who works on um, Chapo Trap House, if you guys don't know it. Uh, it's kind of like uh, the all-male version of this show. I'm just kidding. <laughs> there's, a, there's one woman. Um, no, but this was a very great thread. Um, and I think I wanted to go over some of the images that were in the thread. Um, so this is from Chris Wade. I want to get their name right. Uh, at Say What Again. And he just had been collecting all these great images that have blessed us, that have haunted our eyes ever since Trump was inaugurated four years ago. And by the way, I don't have a great slideshow, but I was at the inauguration four years ago as news broke. We were um, inhabiting our alter egos, the Orchada Armada. So if you're a patron and you are so generous enough to give $50 a month, you're part of the Orchada Armada, baby. And the Orchada Armada is our answer to the Tea Party. Um, so if you guys remember from years ago when Trump was elected, um, I put out a piece that was uh, just, I, I really wish I could cue it up right now, but it was a piece that was like when he first was elected, you know, and the, the overarching statement was that we, we were let down, that all Americans were let down by even allowing 
someone like Trump to be elected. The media inflating him, giving him you know, millions and millions of dollars of free advertising. Um, the train wreck that got so much attention that essentially normalized what we were seeing, that normalized the fact that, you know, Jake Tapper would do things like ask every single person on the Republican debate stage what they thought of Trump's wall. It's like, bitch, why are you even using that as a as a talking point, as like a, a point of a question? Like, don't normalize him by asking every other candidate to at, to opine on where they stand on this bonkers idea. That was that was where we stood four years ago. And it's been a long four years. And we've called Trump everything. And when I say we, I mean mostly news broke and the work that I've done. Um, we we've called him every kind of name, right? He's then he's like a sleepless goldfish silly putty, a grope tornado, you know, obviously the Cheeto thing, you know, he's, there's nothing you can throw at this man. It all applies. Dirty diaper, Donnie. Um, it's been, it's been a ride. I, I did some Melania impressions. I don't have those queued up for you guys either. Uh, but the Melania impressions were very nice. And I'm sure that today you see that she is not a fake. She is not a fake because she has left the Oval Office. She's left the White House. And here we are in a video that I hope do not get taken down because of copyright. But this is Trump finally leaving the White House. <laughs> Trump. Bye. There he was. He didn't do a Nixonian, uh, you know, deuces on that. Or I am not a crook as I'm sure Roger Stone was like, you know what, Mr. President, you should definitely do the Nixon sign. You know, I think it's a great legacy to have. You know, you're, he was a crook. You're a crook. You say you're not a crook. Uh, I don't know how to do a good Roger Stone. How do you talk like a pinstripe? But that was a great moment. Another good moment from today, y'all, um, which has another song that is copyrighted probably underneath it, but let's watch it anyway. Uh, got this one off Twitter. So good, y'all. President Trump's kids were at Joe Biden's inauguration, President Joe Biden's inauguration, and there was a couple tears. Let's see if I move myself out of here. <gasps> Eric, oh my god, oh, you did so sad. He was like, I'm supposed to be the heir. No, you're not. Your name is Eric, but you're not the heir. Although I feel like his name probably is with an H. Eric. Just hold it in, buddy. You think Obama cried when the fucking white devil himself like assumed office and he had to pretend to be nice to him? No. Don't you just mm. Look, first of all, I don't believe in toxic masculinity. You can cry whenever the fuck you want, but that is hilarious. Um, anyway, it's been such a wild ride, and I just want to look back at some of these moments that we've had and we have shared uh, And this thread. Once again, back to what the fuck I was saying earlier, this thread that I thought was just so good. 
Let's look at these photos, y'all. Here we are. Now, I feel like this is a later photo because of the Make America Great Again is like in it's big. And I feel like those big hats, the big font hats didn't come out till later. But this is a picture of class, y'all. Like this is the level of class that Trump was giving us day after day. Just it reminds me of when he made fun of the reporter with disabilities, like this little move. He's clearly sticking his tongue out. He is a disgusting human being. And uh, the fact that we even have this many like stills of him and in, in all of his classlessness is just a testament to his lack of class. You know, look at this. Is it zooming? That's how we feel about you, Mr. Mr. Former President, Mr. 45, Mr. Swastika sign. So let's keep going. This is a classic, classic photo. Yelling at a small boy who is mowing the lawn in the White House. Number one is what was this like? Take your son to work day. Was this some right wingers? Was this like Ted Cruz? Cruz's nephew was like, you know what? I think getting a job will be very good for you. Why don't you go serve in the White House? And uh, the president can tell you about how ugly your aunt is, uh, my wife. And like, but this is just such a wonderful shot, you know, yelling at a small child while he's mowing your own goddamn lawn. And you have no idea how lawn mowers work. You don't really understand the sound barrier. You don't know how noise travels across uh, I don't know, objects. What was he saying? You know, like, what is, I like your khakis. Don't miss a spot. I've never mowed in my life. Did you vote for me? Did you vote for me? So good. So, so good. Okay. Oh, let's talk. Oh my God, you guys. So here was that. It looks like a shrimp scampi. What are they? Was some prawns up in here? Yeah. So here we have some delicious prawns. I feel like we're in the White House already or we're nearby in DC. And this is Mitt Romney meeting with Don Trump. And the face of both of these men is priceless. Mind you, this is after months of Rom Mitt Romney saying that Donald Trump would be an utter disaster for the Republican Party. Uh, spoiler alert, he was. Um, that he was immoral, that he was, you know, not the Republicans that we want, blah, 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 blah. And then when he was elected and he won, it was like, well, maybe is there a job? opening? Is there a position for a uh, guy smiley? You want me to be a uh, secretary of state? I know you do. You want me to no? And this face says it all. Don Trump's face right here. Like, bitch, I got you right where I want you. And then this, I mean, have you seen the wettest noodle? Just the, the saddest, cuckiest. I'm sorry. I don't like that word, but like, mo, here I am. This is what we got. At least the shrimp's good. And did Mitt Romney get a position in the cabinet? No, he did not get a position in the cabinet at all. <laughs> oh, God, it was just such a good one. OK, moving right along. Some of these are in order. Some of these are not. OK, guys, I think you've heard me say before, but Trump's prayer face is the funniest fucking face ever. Like he does duck face, you know, when like women or anyone are trying to just like look hot in front of the camera and just like purse their lips thing. Hey. He does that here. I'm sure this is his like right wing evangelical prayer group. One of many that always just put their hands on him. Like, yo, my man over here in the blue couldn't even couldn't even iron his own tie. You know, this woman's gripping her her unborn baby that she's going to have have to term because they don't believe in abortion. Like this is just an entire the scene of trying to pray on this man who has nothing in his head, nothing. What is he thinking about? Is special sauce Thousand Island or is it a new concoction? Do they have a little relish in it? It tastes like there's relish or is that just part of the Big Mac? Why 
Does the filet fish take nutrients out of my body? Why am I weaker? Anyway, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Love you, Jesus. Amen. What's for breakfast? All right, guys. This is an this is a photo that I completely missed, but I think we need to talk about Kellyanne Conway. And I'm assuming that this is after the Russia report was released, or specifically when William Barr, uh, attorney general, former attorney general, obviously, uh, released like a Cliff's Notes version of uh, Mueller's report. Like, this is all you need to know. Just read this. No collusion. This is Kellyanne Conway on Fox holding up straight up props because this is, once again, the most prop heavy hack comedy uh, routine we've ever seen that also just happened to be president. Um, it says collusion crossed out or conclusion question mark collusion crossed out illusion delusion. <laughs> what the fuck? Like this is what you think of your viewership. This is what you think of Fox news viewers. You could just hold up little pieces of paper with words on them conclusion collusion crossed out with like clearly not not a good enough pen because it's not really crossed out and then illusion delusion which makes no sense like conclusion collusion makes illusion delusion makes no sense kellyanne my god this i think was after um tapper refused to have her back on cnn but it's just classic um classic Kellyanne. Thank you guys for being here, by the way, in this like very special Francesca extra wind blown in the middle of a work day. Um, just going over some of the greatest highlights and moments of Trump's administration in pictures because the presidential library that Trump is raising $2 billion to build will just be made of pictures. So let's do it. This Barbie, fascist Barbie is going to have her own, I don't know, you guys, is there a reality show in the future? I think there is. Okay, let's talk. I'm going back to, I'm going back to your comments. Um, thank you all for being here. Uh, <laughs> Todd Roy says, how do they get the caramel in the caramel bar? That's exactly what he was thinking. Tanish 23, he used the wrong hand over the Bible at the inauguration. I don't know. It's your right hand, right? But it, Maybe. We have to get, go back to those. Can we talk about Ivanka? Ivanka Trump wanting to expand her brand of Chinese hand purses or handbags, Chinese made handbags, and uh, be a fashion icon. Just like other women in this administration, there was Hope Hicks. Remember her? It was like, there was a lot of articles that were like, say what you will about Hope Hicks. She's got great fashion sense. Who fucking cares? Fuck you. I don't, I do not care. Oh, really? Women can wear uh, tuxedos? Cool, cool, cool. You're a fascist. Tell me more about that. But this was so brilliant. <laughs> she looks, she looks like she was cast in a play. This is like the Jungle Book and they had like extra elephant ears and she just decided to wear them. Um, and we're just acting like this is normal. Like, honey, honey. Why are you wearing lily pad? Like, why is this a discarded Halloween costume? Greg Gillum highlights, one of my highlights, we have alternative facts. Exactly. Alternative facts. Remember what alternative facts, going back to Kellyanne, came from. That came from the size of his inauguration, you guys. Remember that? Where I was there at the inauguration. Whole lot of white space. Ooh, there was a lot of room for people. There were a lot of people, though. I was like, in, I'd, I've never been to an inauguration before in my life. So it was like my first. And I've seen bigger crowds as in the next day when there was a giant women's march. I've never seen so many people in my goddamn life. But the inauguration was spare, bare. More people than I thought because I couldn't imagine wanting Trump as your president. But it was pretty bare. And, uh, of course, the very first thing that this administration latched on to because their entire goal was to protect the fragile ego of Trump was to say that there were way more people in attendance than attended Obama's 2008 inauguration. Like, no, that's not true. But instead of getting to fucking work, they spent weeks 
just arguing Sean Spicer chewing all the big red, arguing that like, no, there were more people and that they have alternative facts and they've got alternative population numbers. They've got alternative turnouts. <sighs> Ivanka, Ivanka. I wish I could have gathered my favorite moments of Ivanka. One of them was which was when she, uh, I think news broke, we did a piece on this, when she inserted herself in a very high level conversation at, um, I think it was like the G20 or Davos or something like this, one of those elitist world gatherings. And listen, all the people who were in that conversation, like Macron and like the um, Christine Lagarde, the head of the World Bank, like those people aren't saviors. But Ivanka's like, oh, oh, um, Theresa May was there. But Ivanka's like inserting herself like, um, yeah, it's it's actually, you know, and a lot of it is about um, gender equality because they don't, we don't talk about the gender. Like, bitch, don't ever talk about gender equality in like, mm, wipe that phrase out of your mouth. Your father has groped and potentially raped dozens of people. Shut the fuck up. Uh, gender equality, you nepotistic Barbie. Um, speaking of filet of fish, this was the moment early on, I believe it was 2017 in the presidency when, uh, no, 2018, right? Because it couldn't have been. There was a fucking shutdown of the government for over a month, for like two and a half months. Let me, let me I um, guys, I, I haven't prepared. I'm just, I'm just off the dome. Like I'm that smart. <laughs> Remember the shutdown when ev all federal staff was basically furloughed uh, and the White House kitchen was unable to make any uh, food for a vi the visiting, what was it? The, um, the champions of uh, the Rose Bowl or college football, right? I don't know about ball games. So you're going to have to tell me. I'm going to look at your comments now and see if I'm wrong. Um, and the guy got McDonald's takeout, just nothing but McDonald's takeout for all the football players. And imagine how cold, imagine how cold all of that shit is. Like, also, I like how their salads like good on you. Um, just the corniest emblem of a presidency, the perfect, and, and just, let's just zoom in. Oh my God. What has become of the nation? Mary, you've got to see this. Mary's like, ah, I'm crazy still. Hmm. I think Thousand Island dressing is the special sauce. Ridiculous. All right. We're, we're going to keep going through this, guys. Thanks for being here. This is just me talking shit about the Trump presidency because I, I can't. It's been so long. He's taken so much from us, just like the filet of fish, which, by the way, if you do eat it, it does take nutrients from your body. That's how I feel about this presidency. Taking more from me, taking more of my life, taking more of my my regular colored hair. I'm a blonde, you guys. I'm just kidding. I'm not. I was born blonde. I wasn't born blonde. It's a joke. Um, fuck yeah, bro. Bikers for Trump. This was such a perfect once again. Look at this tough guy. Oh, I'm such a tough guy. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It's like just doing, he's going to do the home improvement like Tim Allen. Oh, oh, oh. Bikers for Trump. Hell yeah. They love me. I'm going to greet them on the White House floor. Like, how? How are you doing this? By the way, it was very fun to see a selfie of the Bikers for Trump leader uh, the next day after the inauguration, uh, feel like he was quote unquote surrounded by the Women's March. If you guys haven't seen that, he's like, oh, you, need, you guys got to send help. I'm surrounded. There's all these women and they're in pussy ass. And I feel like, I don't know, I feel like their uteruses are angry. But this is such a perfect example. This man, it has just the most mangled dick, just tiny and mangled. And he is making up for so much of how his father never hugged him or loved him, his horrible inadequacies. And that's why he's supporting the likes of these folks who, you know, 
I don't even want to read all the shit that's on, you know, this man's vest. There's some veteran stuff that's good. I may look calm, but in my head, I've already killed you three times. Cool, cool, cool. Please take a picture with those guys. I love guns and titties. Tight. Let's just stick with one of those things. Uh, and then we saw that we wonder why the mob felt entitled to just, you know, break into the Capitol building and kill police. Solid photo right here. All right, we're going through it. We're, what's next? Come on. Come on for checking. Okay, first of all, let's talk about this was an early photo of this family. And here's uh, the, the Pope Francis, right? Uh, Bergoglio, former Bergoglio, Bergoglio. and uh, they all just, they all met and there wasn't a funeral, like nothing bad happened, but Ivanka and Melania dressed like they were going to a funeral for some reason, like, oh, we got to meet the Pope. Let's, uh, let's look like we're at a wake. No, you don't have to look like you're in fucking The Godfather, all right? Just because you're in Italy doesn't mean you're Italian. Calm down. You're trying to make... But just, uh, like, what is this? And this is... It's just so Beetlejuice. They're about to be like, Deo! Deo! De like, you know? Great scene, by the way. The best part about this, of course, are these two faces. Trump totally not reading the room. Like, oh, are we not supposed to smile? Just like, yes. Jesus. And then Pope Francis clearly does not want to be there. Like, my man has never wanted to not be anywhere more in his life. He is done with this entire charade. Uh, and I love, I love this juxtaposition. Meanwhile, huh? What do I? Fuck you. I'm in trouble too. I want to look nice just because Donald like his daughter more than me. But blonde does not look good with my complexion. She's not even a real blonde. But I had the idea of wearing the veil first and then Ivanka wanted to wear a veil as well. And so I decided to wear it and everybody said I stole it from her, but in reality she stole it from me. Great photo. All right. There's a whole series of the Trump administration, a whole moment of hurricane photos. See, for any other president, except for George W. Bush, also failed in the middle of a hurricane. But let's talk about the hurricane photos. This is when uh, there was a forecast of a hurricane that was supposed to not really hit Florida, like that he, or no, it was supposed to hit Florida, excuse me. See, you can see the path here. Let's zoom in. Oops. Supposed to hit Florida, but he he said that it was also going to like hit Tennessee or Alabama. And so he drew, or no, he it was Louisiana, right? So here's Louisiana. So he drew an extra, an extra line with a fucking Sharpie to say that it was going to hit Louisiana to to so that the the, that Noah's imagery or whatever, that their image matched what he had falsely claimed. So he just drew it. He just, <laughs> rather than being like, thank God, you know, Louisiana will be spared. No, no, I'm just going to draw an odd, oh, this, this is mine. This is mine. This, where's my crayon? Classic. Classic Trump. Goodbye. Goodbye, son of a bitch. Goodbye. Good night. Oh, next. All right. Another, uh, part of the hurricane series, you know, we thought that it was bad enough that George W. Bush let mostly black Americans in Louisiana and New Orleans um, die. FEMA was not prepared. And then there was Trump and uh, the throwing of the towels onto a crowd of Puerto Ricans. Like, I just love these dudes in the back, their faces over here. They're just like, what the fuck? What is this guy doing? Honest. And he clearly he either thinks he's helping or or he thinks it's funny to sort of mock help. So this was sad, solid. What's up, Kyle? Welcome. Welcome to our little, we're having, it's like we're like in, I can't hear you guys, but it's like we're all sitting in a circle with our legs crossed just watching this. 
Sharpie gate. My God. It, I feel like it's not even bounty too. Like it's not, it was, people were like, oh, it's bounty. Like mm, bounty is better. That looks like some off brand bounty, you know, not that I use paper towels. You guys always use a rag and then wring it out and clean it. Let's limit the paper towel use. But uh, this was perfect. Obviously, um, it took months for Puerto Rico to get whatever, uh, po potable water, electricity back, uh, their dignity after being so horribly embarrassed by the president. Um, all right, we're, we're going to keep going through this. Classic. Just, I mean, come on. This is in the first few months. And we're going to just walk up with some toilet paper on our shoe. Because why not? Because I am a trash man. And when you have to go number two, you have to go number two. And then you just trounce all around in whichever bathroom. Like he wasn't using a crappy bathroom. Well, it was crappy after he used it. But then, and I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna be a an, a corny '80s cartoon villain. I'm not gonna be a good villain, you guys. I'm gonna be a bad villain. That this is that's what that said to me. <sighs> now, look, I am not good at sports either. Um, but for a macho, macho, macho man to make this bitch ass face when he's trying to catch a baseball, <laughs> this first of all says no one played catch with him as a child ever. And that's sad. Number one, everyone, you know, my dad was on and off. I did have, I have two dads. So stepdad was def definitely there. But, you know, I get it on that level. But on another level, this is your face. This is your catching the ball face. Like, not even like a concentrating, just like a, I can't, I can't, I squee. <laughs> it's squee. This is also his bathroom face. God, is this is, oh, I don't even want to think about all the faces. Here's our next series, Holidays. Now, let me just be real. The Easter Bunny at the White House has been a fucking weird tradition for a long time. George W. Bush has the weirdest photo of himself. It's actually one of my favorites. Like, one, you know, the photos you see have on your desktop and you're like, I love this, where he's hugging the Easter Bunny um, and petting him a little bit too closely. Um, but uh, this was, like, you know he's just saying right here, no collusion, no collusion. And the Easter Bunny is like, oh, my word, my goodness, my goodness gracious me. Well, someone's got to get, I've, I've so flabbergasted, my, my eyeglasses have twisted. Why does this Easter Bunny look like if Mitch McConnell like worked at Disneyland for the rest of his life. That's what I'm getting from that Easter bunny. Okay, holidays continued. Halloween or just a regular day in the White House? This is Trump, clearly with a child, I think. Is it Barron after, before the growth spurt? Because you know how Barron like four years ago was like, I am four foot six or, and now he's seven feet two or whatever he is. It's just, disgustingly large. Um, poor Baron. I still have hope. I think he's going to lead the revolution in the future. Maybe, maybe not. You never know. Um, uh, but this is just a skeleton showing Trump something. I feel like they're looking, I feel like they're, he's probably like, look at that girl's ass, you know? Um, it's definitely given me a lot of, uh, karate kid vibes. Um, just dressed as skeleton, uh, but also a big foreshadowing of everything to come in terms of this administration and uh, just how real it would get in terms of, you know, all the death. Uh, all right. Next series is just about the foreign policy. You guys, Helsinki 2018 for me was that moment. That press conference was so perfect. That's when you knew this man is a Manchurian fucking candidate. This guy is in Putin's pocket. Putin's got him right where he wants him. There is a PP tape where he is in the corner touching himself while prostitutes pee on a bed. I swear to God, I've stood by this and I will say it again. God damn it. You guys know how I feel about the P tape. It is her real. 
But what we do know is real is that Russia definitely helped the Trump administration, the Trump campaign, the number of crossovers. Obviously, just look no further than all the pardons that all of his stooges have gotten for lying to the FBI about their connections to Russia and the Trump campaign. And this press conference was the moment where Trump was like asked by the media, you know, so what do you say to these revelations that, you know, hackers through Russia had a back channel to the Trump administration, helped leak the DNC documents, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, had voter rolls, um, all that. And Trump looked over at Putin and was like, don't do it again. Stop it, you naughty, naughty boy. And I was like, oh my God, what even is America anymore? We, okay, we're just cool. And you look, you got to hand it to Putin, man. The guy, I mean, his dick grew like three inches after all this because he really won, didn't he? Okay, another photo. Perfect uh, foreign policy photo. This was classic. This is beautiful. This is like, you want to like paint this, you know? with Angela, leader of the free world and Western European democracy. I actually believe that. I don't just say that ironically. Um, but let's be real. Germany is kind of the, the last holdout, uh, thank God. And uh, here we are, everyone's standing. Trump is the only one sitting. And he's just like, mm, I just farted. What do you say to that? Uh, I think that uh, Muslims are coming across the border. I think you're a Muslim. What do you say to that? And somehow they have to be like, oh God, we got oh God. we gotta negotiate with this bitch. We gotta negotiate with this motherfucker. It's just amazing. All right. You guys are so, you guys are still here. Yay. We're having fun. This is a great bonus. I love this. Thank you for being a patri a patron. I can't even say it right. I go there. Uh, all right, wait, let me make this, let me make this full screen. Full screen. Okay, go on, keep in going, keep in going. Um, raping a flag, tight. Just like no one wanted you to hold, no one wanted you to hug the flag. You don't have to hug the flag. Maybe don't hug the flag. Okay, foreign policy, Saudi Arabia orb moment. I mean, top creme de la creme of moments where he's just like, I think this means I'm special. I think that we've entered the cabal. When they say the cabal, I think I'm in it now. He's just holding that orb, like trying to get rich by osmosis. Look at this. What did they tell him that did? Is this CCL here? This is LCC, isn't it? Um, so here he is just holding the orb. I don't know what they told him this did. I don't know why he thought this was a good idea. This was a little bit before or after he was dancing with the sword. So it was like had a whole sword dance and then he had the orb dance and just like other weird, like eyes wide shut of, you know, global elites, all the shit they, it's like, this is the stuff you don't want to see. Like, if they were all wearing masks right now, you knew an orgy was about to break out. You know, this is the shit. This is some Shriners Masonic shit. You know? I don't need to see this. Like, you want to talk about Q? This is some Q shit. This is some weird... I'm done. Okay, I love this photo because it was when there was a supposed softening of tension between North Korea and the United States. And Pompeo took this... Very historic photo, which looks like it was taken at a J.C. Penney in like the 1980s when, uh, you know, and like the background is fake, but like the carpet is real. Do you know what I mean? I had those photos. Maybe you guys didn't have those photos, but it is such a throwback, uh, not just because of Kim Jong Un's um, outfit and hair, which. I mean, does he have a cow that just licks the top? You know, is he trying to do a reverse Trump? The haircut is very disturbing. But then you've got Pompeo over here. Mr. Multiculturalism is bad, as he just tweeted out recently. Uh, and we need to defend our culture. Fucking Mike Pompeo is going to try and run for president in 2024. Here he is with Kim Jong-un. Good, good job, buddy. 
guess what you got for uh, making a deal with or not making a deal with North Korea? You got nothing. You got nothing. In fact, North Korea got something, which was just showing, like, like totally, like, showing off to his own people who he represses that, like, North Korea matters and that he can strong arm his way into getting a meeting with kind of conceding nothing. There were no weapons that were demobilized. There was no like a uh, missile that was pre prevented from being launched. In fact, like a couple weeks after this, I feel like they tested another missile, tested another rocket. So talk about a fucking failure. Look, I don't want to go to war with North Korea at all. Oh my God. But this was the wrong way to do it. Cause you need to get something for a meeting. Like it's a big deal to meet with like the head of a totalitarian nuclear armed repressive regime. That's been basically calling you, you know, uh, uh, you know, whatever evil for, for years now, you don't just meet with them with no preconditions. Anyway, cute photo. Shinzo Abe of Japan and the feeding of the koi fish. I love how everyone's like, that's not how you do it. That's, you do, it, you're supposed to just sprinkle on a fish. Like, here you go, fish. Here, eat the fish. I'm surprised he didn't just like grab a koi and just like shove, you know, think, eat it. You know, what's wrong with you? He's just like the, the Elmira of, uh, of animals. All right, guys. So another thing that uh, Chris pointed out um, hang on, I gotta answer a text real quick. Uh, 10 minutes. <laughs> the power stance. Like, wh why? Why we gotta stand like this? What is this? What is happening here? He stands like this all the time. And I, you know what this looks like to me? First of all, he wears heels. We know this, like, like uh, Kim Jong-un, who we just talked about. He wears a little bit of a lift, which is Look, I'm not knocking that. If you want to wear a lift, makes you feel better, it's fine. I happen to think short guys are attractive. So I think it's uh, not a big deal. You don't have to be taller uh, if you're straight than the female. That's bullshit. But this is some next level insecurity. And this feels like he's tired of standing in heels. You know, like his butt. Like he's just, he's just like, what is this? Did he pee pee his pants? Is there, this is also, you know, when you used to walk, if you ever shat your pants as a child and then you like walk, like you've got a dirty diaper, this is dirty diaper walk. That's when you don't want like the sides of the poo poo to touch your inner thigh. Power stance. Oh, uh, just a lovely couple. So much love, so much uh, admiration, mutual respect, um, support, uh, joy, really joy. Uh, here he is with a big old letter, a big envelope. I don't know why, but it's a big envelope. Inside, it probably just says no collusion. But I love how everything of this administration, it's just the Disneyland version of like a Republican administration. It's just like, you're on a, this could all be a Disney ride. Like, da ba 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 da ba big envelope. And he was like, that's what he wanted it to look like. And hey, it fucking worked for 75 million people. Um, This is Melania's shirt, jacket, jacket, uh, right, right after uh, the revelations around the Trump administration separating children at the border. She puts on this jacket that says, I really don't care, do you? And it looks like someone like wrote it on her back. But of course it was, you know, probably a $5,000 jacket that she bought with that. I really don't care, do you? The fuck are you doing? You're the fucking first lady. Why are you wearing that? In any circumstance, why are you wearing that? What are you trying to say? And really, she was trying to say that I don't care about these children. I have children in bed on. He gets so big. Speaking of Melania, will not miss her Christmas decorations at all. Like, oh, God. I love how they match her cold, cold heart. Like, what have you, what would you, what is this? What is this? Everything is dead. And this is the, this is like when a white walker is like, you know, I think we need to uh, dress up the uh, north of the wall a little bit. 
That's what you get. And finally, or one of the final, water. Por qué? Why can't he just drink norm norm? What is going? Why the, 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 I gotta, I've got to grip it with both hands because it makes it look bigger. I'm sorry, you guys. I've got terrible, terribly uh, not safe for work humor. But why does he have to drink like that? And then when he drank with one hand, he got applauded for it. Um, which is why I said, show me the undies, because if he doesn't wear diapers and he should show that he doesn't wear diapers, show us your big boy pants. Maybe we'll get that at some point. I think we should sue for the big boy pants. And finally, of course, uh, as comedian Neil Brennan said, do you eat ass? Hell yeah, dog. Look at this. Now, there's a couple things to say about this. One. Terrible shading job. You always have to, you got to go up to the hairline. Oh, the, through the ears too. Don't forget that. <laughs> but he looks like a cartoon, like he was trying to set, he's Wiley Coyote that was trying to set TNT for Roadrunner and it just blew up in his face. <laughs> but like sort of Spaceballs Rick Moranis, he was like, kind of too delusional from the blast. So he was like, hey. <laughs> uh, and the very last photo, I think, is the little bitty desk. His little tiny desk concert. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to sign some blank papers because they took my desk out. Of it. This was the only one that was left. Okay. <laughs> so funny. What the fuck is going on? Why did they leave him the smallest desk in the world? <sighs> oh, I said finally, but it's a Bible. Is that your Bible, Mr. President? It's a Bible. Just lie. Just say it's your Bible. Don't say it's a Bible, you fucking... Isn't it amazing? Like, someone who was so good at lying also was so bad at it because he was so obvious whenever he was and also would just say what was on his mind. Like, the ter just terrible liar. Um, Guys, look at me. Look at me. I'm fucking... Look at this. Here we are. Biden has been inaugurated. Kamala Harris is vice president. Let's get to fucking work. Bernie Sanders is Senate budget chair. Hell yes, let's do this. Let's wind down the military state. Let's wind down the police state. Let's give everyone health care. Let's build some fucking roads and infrastructure. Let's give people tuition-free college. Let's do this. But I'm so happy to say goodbye to this man, to say goodbye, and yet, I mean, there's part of me that might miss him, you know? There's a little bit. Because it'll be less fun, of course, you know? But I am happy that he is going to be gone. I'm trying to find this, like, video for you. Uh, this old, old video that Newsbroke did way, way back when. Oh, my God. Uh, let's see if you guys can hear this at all. This is the very first video we did when Trump won at news broke um and yeah it reflects a lot of how i felt can y'all see this yeah <laughs> that was that was the epic scream heard around the world when trump won uh, I, I definitely went to the bathroom and heaved, cried for a while. It was a pretty rough time. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop sharing real quick, but uh, I wanted to show one last thing because the very first Newsbroke video we ever did, the very first one we did on Trump was called Oops Fascism. And I just want to play a little bit of this. I'll skip through the intro, 
Uh, but it really represents, I think, what we've did for four years, which was fucking sleepwalk into fascism, which is something we can never, ever do again. And it's amazing how relevant this video still is. And this is October 2016. Uh, oh, oops, fascism, classic news broke joint. You know how it is. You're brushing your teeth one morning when all of a sudden... Raise your right hand. <laughs> oops. Fascism. Yes, Donald Trump took his Hitler cosplay to the next level by commanding his followers to pledge allegiance to him via an alarmingly familiar hand gesture. I do solemnly swear. You didn't see it coming, did you? You were too busy trying to get Beyonce tickets to notice the actual formation <laughs> Beyonce jokes. right in front of you. My God. Wikipedia defines fascism as radical. So then we go into this entire explanation of what is fascism is. 2017, when Wikipedia will just become this. Oh God! Remember these chicks? Remember these girls? Okay, but beyond the cadre of creepy youth, the tweeting of Mussolini quotes, and keeping the sequel to Mein Kampf on your nightstand, which is really all we need to know. What makes a fascist? A Hitler okay. or Mussolini? So then we go into this. Based and it's our very studies, first news broke video. Um, and we basically talk about how... First, they must have a strong yeah, man strong complex. complex, bullying the weak, all this. And then there was a little sketch that I want to play you guys that was really cute. And it was... Uh, it was basically we're making fun of how fascism rises in other countries too, and how the United States is not unique in our... Uh, now we're not unique in how, you know, fascism can rise... Uh, here. And so there we do an impression of someone from Spain and someone from Italy under Mussolini. Um, and listen, Kate Elston and Matt Lieb are on this. Far-right nationalism has gripped Europe, but what do Europeans think of their up-and-coming politicians? Hitler, he tells it like it is and is nine afraid to speak his mind. He simply says what we're all thinking, yeah. He represents the silent majority. Oh, no. All the things he say about Islam, he only joking is the joke. Ay, mamma mia. He, how you say, not politically correct. Mussolini, he want to make Italia grande again. <laughs> I fucked that up, but... Yes. It can happen here. It it basically did, and we've got to make sure that we don't have another fascist and uh, all those telltale signs of oh he just tells it like it is. Oh he's saying what we're all thinking quietly. Yeah, no, shut. That part is not a good part of your brain. That part wants authoritarianism and fascism. Quiet that part out. Thank you guys for being here for this little quick pick me up and reflection on the Trump administration. I wanted to do this on Instagram too, but I figured just do something for the patrons. Um, watch it back. Let me know what you think. And hopefully we can do this kind of stuff more often. Thank you, Todd and Greg and Tanish for being here in our little small <laughs> circle and uh, for Kyle for jumping in and out. Um, and hell yeah, I really appreciate